Yo, what's up everybody? Jumping ya, yeah. and today I am back on some Helldivers 2, and I'm gonna be showing off what I think is the meta loadout right now against the bugs. There is a difference between if you're the host of the match and if you're not the host of the match. So I'm gonna talk more about that in the actual gameplay, but for now, this is the loadout I like to bring normally if I'm the host and I'm finding bugs. It's the 500 kilogram bomb eagle. It's the napalm strike eagle. And then we have the amazing quasar cannon. And I love the rover bot. The rover bot against bugs is just too good. Localization booster is like insane. This is so good, especially in a solo, just because it will reduce the enemies. You're gonna see that in this mission. And then the primary, the best one in the game right now against bugs, in my opinion, is the Breaker Incinerary. This thing is insane. Because it's fire, if you're the host, it is way better. Now, if you were not the host and you're joining people, the Dominator is a great choice. The new Eruptor is really good, in my opinion. The Sickle is still amazing. And I don't know about the Exploding Crossbow. I don't personally like it, but maybe you do. The new grenade pistol is just super good because it has opened up the ability for us to not use a normal grenade and now we can use the stun grenade. This is great against the bugs, it's also great against the bots, but with the grenade pistol we can basically just use this as our grenade. That's kind of the whole idea of it. Alrighty guys, so I'm going to get into the gameplay and I'm going to kind of show you on how crazy this loadout can really be. Alrighty, now the first thing I want to talk about is the host loadout versus the non-host loadout now this is mainly for the bugs because fire is not the greatest against the bots so i don't really bother with it i normally just kind of use my off host loadout for the bots it's a shame that this is a thing in the game but yeah it just it is what it is right now in the future hopefully they can fix this and everyone can use the damage over time effects and it's not going to be a problem. But this is just something you got to think about. Now, the incinerary breaker is a little bit different just because the impact of this is pretty nice now. And the fire effect, even if it doesn't work, it still is like, okay, off host. But the thing is, is that the gun just feels good. And anytime a primary gun for me feels really good that's the only thing i really kind of care about i just want the gun to be comfortable and kill stuff pretty fast and effectively and even off host this thing is effective but you do have other options because right now there's some pretty decent primaries you can use the dominator that thing's a beast right now really good against the bots as well if you want to bring it for that reason also you got the sickle still the sickle is still really really good and it's really nice for ammo if that is an issue for you at all if you're just blasting through ammo and that is one kind of downside if you are fighting a lot or shooting a lot at the enemies you will go through the ammo for this breaker actually pretty quick it is what it is with the breaker but if you're using the rover and you have the sickle, the breaker, or the dominator, you can pretty much handle most of the mobs you're going to encounter. And the DPS of that is super nice. And you could even stop like most breaches and stuff just because the rover is just amazing. Now if you want to use the shield, you can always use the shield. If you want to use a supply pack or something like that, you could use that as well. It's just really up to you on what you personally want to use for your backpack, but the rover against bugs is just amazing. I'm gonna be honest, I kinda like it against bots now too. I just do, I love the rover. It's my favorite stratagem by far. But do you know what's quickly becoming my second favorite stratagem? Is the napalm strike. Now if you are playing as the host, and I mean, hey, if you have a group of friends, and someone likes to be the host or you want someone who has the best connection to be the host or if somebody just really likes fire let them be the host because the napalm strike is amazing it really is 
and I don't really see people using it, I'm not gonna lie. And I don't know why, it was just double buffed. If you get those upgrades, you get 25% more damage to fire, and you also get the eagle upgrade, which will drop an extra bomb for you. So, I mean, it's just good. Now, the main thing that you want to do with it is you want to use it as a mob clear, but it also helps you control the breaches. Now, breaches, you know, they kind of suck, and they can be a little bit scary sometimes, but if you got napalm from the host right on top of a breach, it's kind of a joke. Everything that comes out of that breach that's small will just instantly die. And if it is a larger enemy, it will soften them up. And you will see that in this mission where a lot of the brood commanders, this is brood commander hell for sure, that is the modifier. You will see me kill them really quickly with the shotgun and that is because of the napalm making them weak. Now, when it comes to chargers and the quasar cannon, well, one of the best things that they came out with, which is kind of funny because I'm not going to talk about the quasar cannon quite yet, because I got to talk a little bit about and give some love to the grenade pistol. By far, that is the best thing that came out of this war bond. And it's not even close because of the utility of what it does. It totally allows everyone now, if they want to, to use the stun grenade. The stun grenade is so amazing. It's amazing against the bugs. It's amazing against the bots as well. I mean, you can absolutely shred something like a Hulk. If you stun grenade the Hulk and then take your Quasar and shoot him right in the face and the little red dot, he's done for. So it's the same thing against the bots. And you can do that against chargers as well. Just stun them and shoot them right in the face. And it's just the easiest way to take out something like that that's annoying and a threat. Now the Quasar can also be used against the boss level enemies like the Bio Titan. You can 1v1 a Bio Titan and win. And that is why the Quasar is the meta support weapon right now. Just because of all the things it can do. And that's not even to mention the objectives it can do. You can straight up do so many different objectives on the map by just sniping things. It is definitely the easiest to use rocket launcher. And that's why it's so popular. It allows you to have like a rocket launcher, but it's just... It's so much easier to use than the disposables. And definitely way easier than that damn recoilless rifle. Now, I know a lot of people love these heavy weapons and stuff, but I'm sorry. I don't want to give up my backpack. I just don't. In my personal opinion, when we're talking about what is meta, meta in Helldivers 2 is a loadout that when you go into your mission, you know that no matter what, in that mission, you'll have everything covered. Everything will be covered. And... That's what the railgun did with the breaker. That's what the sickle and the arc thrower was doing. And that is what the quasar cannon is doing right now. But guess what? There's actually a lot of different primaries you can use. A lot of different ones that are really good. The breaker overall, especially against bugs, especially if you're a host, is the best in my opinion. It just does. It just feels so good. Especially with the rover. The rover is just so nice. The main thing I think most people want from the primaries is we want to be able to fight with our primary and our secondary. Maybe just two of those weapons combined. And be able to kind of handle most of the enemies. And then we have to have stratagem stuff to deal with like certain units. That's totally cool. That's what we want. And that's essentially right now what the Breaker is doing and guns like the Dominator. I really like that new Eruptor. I think that's the name of it. That sniper that's explosive is so awesome. That's definitely one of my favorite guns right now. And I'm thinking about doing the same thing right here. 
with my off host loadout because there is a difference even for bugs basically the main difference is to switch out the napalm for the eagle airstrike and then to switch out the primary for something either the dominator or the eruptor is just pretty cool with the eruptor you don't need the grenade pistol but yeah that grenade pistol it just it helps so much and you're gonna see it here because first this is a pretty ridiculous breach and I hate these secondary objectives. I think some of them take way too long. Artillery takes way too long. And this one takes way too long. And this one's just boring because you're waiting for it. I'm about to get a breach here. And you're going to see this napalm just wipe it out. Now this is just a lot of little bugs. So they just instantly die. But the breach. The breach only lasts for like a couple seconds. It's kind of crazy fast. So check this out. I want to actually get this terminal. I knew I was going to get this breach here. I could see them coming. So I kind of chose to make sure I got that done because otherwise, who knows? Sometimes you just have to run away and it's like, I ain't going back now. So I just want to make sure I got that done. But look at that napalm. It just destroys them. And I just love to watch them burn. It's a lot of fun. Now I'm going to head over to the main objective and you get to see some of this grenade pistol because grenade pistol sick now one of the big threats out there are the enemies that this fire breaker can't really kill super super fast and some of those enemies would be the hive guards those are the red ones with the armor then you have the brood commanders which are the bigger red ones that can spawn other enemies and they have armor you hit them once with the grenade pistol and then shoot them with this shotgun, they will die so fast. And the biggest threat of all and the worst bugs of all right now in the game is the bio spewers. I hate the spewers. Their acid spit definitely feels like it's stronger now. They said that they were going to lower the damage, but it feels like they upped the damage maybe by accident. I have no idea. But also the bio spewers feel way tankier now. They just do. Like, I don't know. Their armor is crazy. You see things sometimes from them and you hit them with things and you're like, how are they alive? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. And there could be chargers next to them sometimes and the chargers will die and they will live because they're just so damn tanky. I don't get it. It's wild. Now, an exploding gun is really good against any of the ticks. And you're going to be very happy if you brought an exploding gun if you end up having to fight a ton of the tick enemies, right? This loadout is fine because of the grenade pistol now. The grenade pistol allows me to soften up the bio spewers. Basically, just flat out kill the nursing spewers. The grenade pistol will kill them. Like, that's insane. Now, speaking of those spewers, that is the reason why I have gotten off of the flamethrower. The spewers, since they have become, like, more OP now, with their spit, and they just instantly delete you if that hits you, you have to get into that spit's range with the flamethrower. The flamethrower range is the spit's range. So if you are unfortunate and you get the spewers, especially bio spewers, you're going to have a miserable time because you're just constantly dodging them. Now, the damage it does is impressive. It's extremely impressive against the Biospheres because those things are so tanky and so many things cannot kill them quick. The Flamethrower can. And if you stun a Charger and you shoot the Charger's leg as the host with all these fire buffs, you are just instantly deleting Chargers now. It's awesome. But you know what else also instantly deletes the charger? The Quasar Cannon when you shoot him in the face after stunning him just like this. I mean, this is just as easy, but with the Quasar Cannon, I know I can fight a Bile Titan. I can't do that with the Flamethrower. I also know that if I see a Shrieker's Nest, I can handle it from distance. I don't have to actually run in there and then have all of them come at me or do a hell bomb or drop a bunch of 500 kilogram bombs that I might not have. 
So, yeah, I don't really like the flamethrower right now. Napalm does what the flamethrower is trying to do, or at least what I'm trying to do with it, which mainly is burn all the bugs, especially the ones that are coming out of the breach. Whenever I get a breach and I have the flamethrower, I get real, like, excited. I'm like, ooh, this is going to be fun. And a lot of times I'm disappointed because what I want to do is just run to the breach light it on fire, and then just hear my crazy lady go, FOR SUPER! <laughs> I mean, it's amazing, and everybody laughs. It's just awesome. The problem with that is that I get in close, and then an auto cannon shoots me in the back. Or, oh crap, there's an airstrike coming in. Let me run away. The teammates, you are interfering with them because you are getting in their range of what they're trying to do right and on top of that you are close to the bugs you're constantly lighting yourself on fire your teammates are getting killed by you because of your fire it's horrific the napalm's way better you see a breach you type in the code you chuck it it burns everything it continues to burn everything it softens the stronger guys up it's not gonna like delete the bios viewers or it's not gonna completely destroy the chargers like the flamethrower can but guess what you got a quasar cannon you got a grenade pistol now you are ready to go and the dps that you get from the rover and the breaker on host is just out of this world now this this right here this is a nice shot now I knew I had to dodge backwards because if I was to get hit by those little bugs, your aim's gonna get real wonky and the shot's gonna go flying way off to the side where it doesn't even make a lot of sense. And when that does happen, like you can hit teammates with that. So you gotta be careful. And that can happen with any of the rocket launcher type weapons. So you do have to be super careful to not be surrounded by little bugs because you're probably going to miss, and it's going to piss you off, and it's just horrific. But one thing I can't stress enough, I guess, with the Quasar, and this is true with all the rocket launcher weapons, is the range it gives you. And the combo with the stun, is you can chuck the stun really far and stun a charger in the distance, and then you know you can line up your shot, charge it up, and one-shot that thing. That is just so valuable, it's like insane. Not to mention the objectives, just the ability to snipe stuff. Now, here's my fear. My fear is, because it's such a good meta weapon, it's so versatile and useful as a weapon, they're going to nerf it. They're going to completely change the way the weapon works. Maybe double the charge time, double the cooldown time on when you can fire it again. Maybe limit the range where it can't snipe no more. It's like a limit of 50 meters or something. If they do any of that, it will be horrific. I think the Quasar is in a perfect position. And really, the game just needs better support weapons. They need to buff more stuff. We need better primaries. I think right now, though, Primary-wise, we're in a kind of good spot. The sickle's still really good. The Dominator's great. This shotgun, if you're the host especially, is just amazing. And then you have the new exploding guns if you like those. I personally don't like the crossbow. I just don't like the way it feels. Again, the gun's got to be you. Good. And the crossbow for me just doesn't feel that way. Where, to be honest, the other one, the sniper feels really nice if you're using it with a particular type of ranged playstyle, and you can control breaches with that weapon just keep shooting in the breach and you can rack up tons of kills especially if there's like a ton of little bugs and stuff now this is just going to show why this weapon is so valuable right i don't have to get close to the shriekers nest i can stay back now, unfortunately, at some point, I do get close enough that they will come out and stuff. This is kind of non-stop action here. You know, when you're by yourself, this is effective strategy, what I'm doing. But it's a very slow strategy, what I'm doing. So, that means a lot of little bugs are going to come. They're going to hear all the noise. Plus, for whatever reason, Arrowhead, they're kind of evil with the Shrieker Nest. They love to put, like, Stalker's Nest right next to it, giant hives. 
all types of stuff where it's just horrific at times. With this one, I don't think it's really all that bad, but it is just so many bugs keep coming, and I keep having to just stop to deal with that, so it's non-stop action. One of the things about doing the solo that I like is that even though you're going to see me really use this pistol a lot, right? You're going to see me spam my grenades a lot. When I'm playing in a team, I don't spam those things nearly as much because I am more focused on trying to conserve ammo and stuff. And that's including with the shotgun, although I do blow through this shotgun pretty quickly in a team setting. Good example here of what I'm talking about. I got hit, it's over. I have to retreat. I have to get away from that. There's no way I'm going to charge that Quasar. I'm going to get hit again. I'm going to miss. It's just going to be frustrating. Just might have to use another grenade. Who knows? But that also means that they were able to completely breach on me. But, once again, Napalm to the rescue. I can focus DPS on that Brute Commander. Wait for this guy to kind of get closer because I had time. Stun him. Blow his head off real quick. Now one thing about this weapon, by the way, if you're ever not sure if you're going to get the headshot, you can always adjust and hit the leg. Treat it like the old railgun. Hit the leg, and guess what? The Quasar Cannon is like the old railgun, but it is so much better. It will shred that leg right off one shot, and then you pull out, let's say, the shotgun, and it's like one or two shots, because he's so weak from the Quasar hit that you could just kill him super, super fast. That's another really effective strategy. But the headshot with the stun is just real easy to get from any range. So it's really nice. Now we have a bio titan. And I wasn't sure about the 500 kilogram bomb. Unfortunately, it didn't really hit him good. It looked like it did, but I don't know. He kind of stopped to back for that. But now I can 1v1 him with the Quasar Cannon, so let's do this. So, the main thing you have to do is to try to get him to spit. And when he spits, you just have to dodge that and you can easily get a shot off. And then the other thing to do is, of course, to run and hope that you don't run into something really bad. That's one of the things that can happen, is you can run into like a group of enemies, maybe more chargers, maybe another Bio Titan. It happens. It sucks. But if you can maintain distance and you can charge up your shot, you just want to keep aiming for the head and it takes about three shots. Good shots to his head will kill him. And if you have a team where everybody has this, you see a bio titan in the distance, if everybody shoots him all at once, he will go flying. Like, it's amazing. So again just goes to show like the weapon is just insane it gives you so much diversity on what you can do with it and that's what the players want that's really what we want okay because even though yes it's meta we like it i don't like to be in a situation even if i'm in a multiplayer situation where there's a bio titan and i can't do anything i have all my stuff on cooldown, my weapons will just tickle it or do nothing to it, and I have to run and rely on my teammates to do something. Or, the same thing can be true with chargers. I can't really effectively deal with them. If they get on me, maybe I can stun them. I kind of have to run away from them. You don't want to ever be in that situation. Those situations suck. So, in my opinion, like, every setup I try to do, I try to have some diversity. An example is, if I bring that Eruptor Sniper, that Sniper can take the butt off of a Charger pretty easily. It's about three shots. So, I can factor that in to go, well, that could deal with Chargers. But then again, to be honest, the Dominator, if you're looking for a primary that can just kill Chargers, the Dominator is the best choice. All you have to do is stun them, get behind them, and shoot them in the butt, and then that's it. Their butt is gone. Now, you might be wondering, like, why would you want to do that? Well, that's a good combo with, like, something like the Arc Thrower, right? Because the Arc Thrower you can use for mobbing stuff, and then you can pull out that Dominator to deal with that Charger, and it's going to kill them a lot faster than that Arc Thrower will do it. So, 
you know, these are the things you should think about. And same with your stratagems. Now, this is kind of the reality. The 500 kilogram bomb is just so good. It's too versatile. You could use it to help you do with a large group of chargers. It could take out the boss level enemies. You know, you can use it to help you close major bug holes and stuff. It's just too good not to have the 500 kilogram bomb, in my opinion. And then after that, Eagle Airstrike or Napalm, if you're host and you're doing bugs, that's my favorite combo right there. The Eagle Airstrike can help you in so many ways. It can just demolish bug holes, factories if you're doing bots. It's really good against the bots, just because if they do come in with a drop ship, and that's another thing about the Quasar, I guess we should mention. Like you can just shoot the freaking drop ships out of the air with the Quasar. So Quasar is like super MVP for bots for that one reason alone, because that's a lot of fun to do and it's cool to watch when you shoot those things down. But the airstrike, let's say that the ship does come in and it just drops a bunch of stuff off. Call it an airstrike, you wipe the whole thing out. You see a factory or a whole bunch of factories, call an airstrike. You wipe the whole thing out. Bug hole, call an airstrike. A million enemies in front of you, like 50 of them, call an airstrike. You'll kill like so many of them. You can get like 50 kills with an airstrike easily if there's 50 enemies. So that's really good. The cluster bomb's good too. That was buffed, just like the airstrike, just like the napalm. The problem with the cluster bomb is that if you're playing a multiplayer, be careful, please. Otherwise, I think people will probably kick you if you kill them at all with that just because they hate it and they don't know why you would bring that. So be aware. The airstrike, though, is fine. Nine times out of ten. Although, yeah, you can kill teammates with it, too. Napalm, I really like for not killing teammates because... When it comes in with the explosion, that's like when it's going to probably kill someone. And a lot of times, even when they're kind of close to it, those explosions like don't touch the teammates. And then they will see the napalm. Unlike the flamethrower, which the flame can be invisible sometimes, the napalm is pretty damn clear that the whole floor is on fire. So you know, okay, let me not walk that way. Let me just stand where I'm at, where it's safe and I can just shoot the enemies from here while they all are on fire. Makes sense. Anyway, yeah, as you can tell, I was a big fan of the flamethrower. I was using it a lot, but I just have gotten annoyed with it. And I started bringing napalm with the flamethrower, but that is just, it just doesn't make no sense, honestly. Like if you do that, the reason why that's really dumb is because you're throwing napalm on top of the breach where really you kind of want the flamethrower on top of the breach. Again, I'm thinking in terms of my loadout on like how best to handle every situation. I don't want two things doing the same thing. So if I have the flamethrower, the flamethrower can take the role of napalm. Now again, I have to 1v1 this guy. And I didn't get the 100% completion on this mission. I actually got like a 99% completion, so I did pretty much everything. But the last thing I wanted to try to do, because I knew I was going to probably have to do an emergency extraction here. So the last thing I wanted to do was get like, I guess a small little bug hole. But as I went up that hill, there was just no way. And then this guy got on me, so I knew I need to just try to extract now. And one awesome thing about this shotgun, by the way, is that you can absolutely shoot bio titans with it and set them on fire really easily and then that fire damage will actually do decent damage to them if you just keep doing it over and over again keep that in mind again as the host this is very important as someone who's not the host i wouldn't worry about it as much it probably doesn't matter like at all but napalm bombs by the way also do work to weaken bio titans the airstrike as well like a lot of people don't call in airstrikes on top of the bio titan because it's kind of a waste it's not going to kill it but it does weaken it and the thing is is that when you have the quasar cannon being able to weaken the bio titan means that you're going to be able to then one shot it a lot of times with the headshot 
So keep that in mind. It's very nice. And that's the same with a couple other stratagems that are very good right now, in my opinion. One is the Rail Cannon. Because it can come in and hit the Bile Titan. If it kills it, great. If it doesn't, normally one shot from the Quasar will then kill it. It just saves you a big hassle there. And yeah, at this point, because it's an emergency extraction, I am just going to run away to get some distance from the extraction to try to keep them off of it. The problem is they're all coming from that way. So I don't really think I'm very successful at this, but that is one big problem with emergency extraction. You have no stratagems. If you die, that's it. Although that could be a strategy. If you want to save some time and you don't care about samples and nothing like that, you could always just kill yourself and let it be over. It is a successful mission because, well, I did complete it. But this will be a good example of the rover and the incinerary breaker just controlling this giant horde of little bug hell that's coming at me at the end here. Now, one thing I haven't talked about in the video, I did make another video kind of talking about this, but it's this armor I'm wearing, I personally love, and I think this is the best armor in the game. This is the Heavy Stim Armor, CM17 Butcher. You get it from the Super Shop, so you're going to have to spend Super Credits to get it. I believe it's even like 400, so it's actually like one of the more expensive armors. But it's totally worth it because the heavy armor gives you more damage reduction percentage they talked about how they buffed that medium armors got an additional five percent and heavy armors got an additional ten percent now the question is what is the number i don't know i don't think anybody really knows but i guess technically there is supposed to be some type of percentage damage reduction that can come from the different armors now this is gonna suck and this is why I love this armor because when I stem I get the stem effect for three seconds and this is gonna be one sketchy extraction just because I have a million little bugs chasing me and well he's actually kind of far away I thought he was a lot closer I was mistaken and I was like uh oh and yeah, unfortunately, you know, what am I supposed to do here? Just too many of them, I stemmed, I dived, the time, man, zero seconds, I'm just kidding, I made it, of course. But that was a pretty awesome mission, I know I got a lot of kills, I believe it was like 917, but... I mean, that's pretty much it for this video. There's really not anything else I want to talk about. So I really do hope that you have enjoyed it and that it has helped. If it has, will you please like the video for me? I would appreciate it if you would subscribe. If you're interested in more Helldivers 2 content, I'm going to try to come out with more of this. I really do love this game. Thank you so much for watching. And I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day. And peace. So.